When it comes to CPU temps, there is no doubt that the 10900K sits right near the top. It seems pretty logical then that the 120mm AIO that Alienware slapped on to cool it just isn't going to cut it. Especially if you want to take advantage of the over 5 GHz boost capability and apply that to all the cores. Even the 240mm AIO from Corsair couldn't keep up, allowing temps to skyrocket to 100C, and instead of thermothrottling, the system just kind of gave up. So your best bet is to go for a 360mm AIO or a custom loop. Of course, which one you go for depends on your level of expertise, budget, and your case requirements. So if an AIO is your choice, I've got two for you right here. Now, ugh, let's get these out here first. There's one and there's two. These may look the same physically, but they differ wildly in price. First up, we have the MSI MPG Core Liquid K360. That is a very long name. It's got your RGB, it's got an LCD, and it's got well, a pretty hefty price tag. Coming in at a whopping 1399 real. That's 385 in American monies, which puts it into custom loop territory. So, on the opposite end of the scale, we have the PC cooler 360 millimeter, uh, what's it called? Um, GLCX 360. This costs 499 real, or, 137 US dollars. If my math is correct, that's um, 900 real less. Surely the performance can't be that much different, can it? Well, the answer may surprise you. To run these AAOs through their paces, we'll be doing a smattering of benchmarks like Cinebench R23, IDA64, Prime95, and Intel Burn. The 10900K will be overclocked to 5.1 GHz on all cores, running in an ASUS Prime Z590A motherboard. It's not the best board for overclocking, but we aren't going extreme here. During those benchmarks, I will be monitoring and recording temperatures as well as noise levels. We will also be looking at fan RPM, idle temps, as well as the overall aesthetics, because you know, Cooling performance is great and all, but it needs to look good while doing it. Let's talk about the MSI MPG Core Liquid K360 first. It's quite capable of cooling the overclocked 10900K during all of the tests. Part of this capability is due to its high RPM fans. This cooling performance comes with a sound penalty, running at 54 decibels during the benchmarks at 100% speed, which is 2500 RPM, a lot higher than the PC cooler AIO. This is of course in an open air configuration, so noise levels will be lower if you install this inside of a case of some sorts. The cooling performance is great, but that does not justify the price, as other coolers from companies like EK and Corsair have similar performance at a much lower cost. What those other AAOs do not have is an LCD screen and a VRM fan. Let's talk about that LCD screen first. It's a uh, neat. You can put your own BMP image on there, so that's pretty cool. It can also display temps, RPM, things like that. The software that controls it is MSI Center, and once it finally opens after several crashes, it's buggy as heck. Loading up images can cause it to freeze up and require a restart, and the fan control demands a frustrating level of precision to move the sliders around. The LCD itself is bright and looks great, only to be dimmed down by the tinted cover. Not sure what the logic there was. Now the VRM fans. This is a pretty cool concept that doesn't really help in reality. VRM temps under load were 59 degrees Celsius and this decreased to 56 degrees Celsius when the fan was spooled up to 100%. Not quite the 30 degrees C improvement they claimed on their site. The fan also runs at 3800 RPM and becomes the loudest component on the entire system when it's running. Now, neither of these features are new tech and neither add to the performance of the cooler. They are definitely not worth the added price. And lastly, we need to discuss the cables. Everything plugs into the pump here. Everything, fans, RGB, USB, all of it. It's a mess. And it should have been offloaded to a controller that could be mounted somewhere more discreet. It really takes away from the overall look 
And this is honestly a deal breaker for me, especially at this price point. I mean, just look at that. Ugh. Aesthetics aside though, it does perform quite well. Is it worth what you're paying for it? No. Absolutely not. You can get that same performance from other coolers. But if you want an LCD, well, you have a very small amount of option. If that's what you're looking for, then yeah, this option looks a little more competitive. So let's look at the much, much cheaper option, shall we? The PC Cooler GIX360 was capable of cooling the 10900K, but not as good as the MSI MPG. Let's get into that a little bit. The Corsair 240 millimeter AAO saw temps skyrocket to 100C and eventually caused a thermal shutdown, not just a throttle. Now with this AAO, we are seeing average temps of 76 Celsius with the same overclock and the same test with a maximum temp of 81 for a brief moment. That is well within safe margins and could even offer some headroom for pushing the 10900K further. The noise levels are pretty low due to the fans running at slower speeds with a maximum RPM of 1500. This produces 46 decibels and allows for running this at 100% fan speeds all the time. The looks are pretty basic, but cover all the bases. RGB fans, yes. RGB on the pump, yes. Controllable through software, well, kinda. It is controlled using your motherboard software, which was Armory Crate for this board. I actually like the looks of the softer RGB on the pump. In conclusion, the pumps used in both of these are the same Asetek used in almost all AIOs, the only difference being the generation that is used. Performance is better with the K360, and it has some nifty features, but that does not justify the cost. If your budget allows for a higher priced AIO, then this is a pretty attractive option. For me, I would go for the PC Cooler AAO and use the savings to upgrade your GPU. Now, if you want to get either of these, you can head to Store 974 at the Gate Mall in Doha or online at store974.com. I will throw the links for both of these in the description as well as links for all the equipment they use in these videos. If you do head to Store 974, make sure you use the code BARTMANSBITS during checkout to get 3% off of your purchase. 3% of that will come back to help out this channel so I can continue making these videos. Now, if you have any suggestions on what I should review next, let me know in the comments. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.